Hi, I'm Johnny Thompson and I'm making this video about possible career paths that you might want to aim at for when you graduate from music college. Um, a lot of you, when you apply for music college, you might have a really good idea what it is that you want to do when you leave, leave college, but um, sometimes the journey to get into that career path might not be quite as straightforward as you hoped. Um, so we're just going to go through a few different avenues that you might find yourself going down once you leave music college and give you a little idea on how to get on board with that sort of thing. So the first one is probably the most commonly thought of uh, career path for students that are going into music conservatoire, um, especially on, on an instrument, and uh, that's to be an orchestral player. Um, now I know that when I was growing up, that's exactly what I wanted to do, um, but my career has taken all sorts of twists and turns, which we'll go on to talk about a little bit later on in the video. But um, the first thing to bear in mind about being an orchestral player, obviously it's a very difficult job to get into. Um, first of all, there's very high standards to keep and whatnot. But um, another important point is that there, there are not a lot of job opportunities there. Um, there's not a huge amount of vacancies become available. Um, I'm a trumpet player, and especially as a trumpet player, there might be maybe two or three jobs in each orchestra, and these uh, positions don't open up very often. And the world's very small now, uh, so your competition is literally worldwide. Um, so you are up against an awful lot of people to get these very few jobs. Um, now, the the job itself, uh, to get a job, it's done through an audition process. And the first round is just by sending in your CV. So you need to have a lot of experience uh, behind you um, just to get through that first CV round. And then you'll get on to the actual practical auditions and that can be held over maybe two or three rounds and that's playing your set pieces, your concertos and all of the orchestral excerpts as well which hopefully you'll be working very hard on when you're at music college. Um, and if you manage to get through all of that then uh, you'll go on to what's called a trial where you might sit in the seat uh, in the orchestra for about a month or so doing the job along with maybe one or two others that have made it that far and then hopefully at the end of that one of you will, will end up getting the job, but it has been known, to be honest, in the past to go through that entire um, that entire setup and then have to restart the process all again because um, the orchestra decided they didn't want anyone after all of that. So um, it's quite a long, long-winded uh, process to go through, but um, obviously if you do get into that uh, side of the business in the orchestral seat, it's uh, extremely rewarding playing that music. You've got your monthly paycheck coming in and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah a really exciting position to get. Now, the second career path, and this is one that I've got um, a bit more experience in, is playing in theatre shows and musicals and that sort of thing. Um, now, one of the strange things about the, the theatre side of the industry is that there isn't actually any audition process for the musicians to go through for the most part. It's all done on reputation, really. Um, so uh, we'll talk a bit more about your reputation and that sort of thing in uh, my third um, career path. But um, for the moment, yeah, the in the theatre shows, it's all sort of done through rep reputation and that kind of thing. And um, you generally get involved by doing sit-ins in the actual show itself. So that's when you will go and sit next to someone else um, that's that's doing the job currently and then you know if they happen to be ill one day you might be able to uh, work your way into dep for them deputize for them and then obviously by word of mouth if you do a good job then um, you might start to get booked for more things here and there um, a touring show uh, tends to be you will spend maybe one to two weeks uh, in each city uh, depending if it's a UK tour, uh, it might be a bit longer in venues if you're going internationally as well. Um, and within each week, you're doing anywhere between sort of eight and ten shows. Um, and um, it's it's a difficult job uh, for quite a few reasons, really. Obviously, you must be very consistent with with your playing and whatnot. But also, the difficulties come on a more sort of personal side of things. You're away from home. A lot and your family a lot you know if you've got kids or anything like that uh, once you get to that stage and you're you're away missing your kids and that kind of thing um and also uh just the current sort of environment uh i suppose all over the music industry is that there's a lot of cuts happening to band sizes uh you know band sizes are being reduced 
and the uh, same probably happens with uh, a lot of the orchestras too. So it is quite a competitive market to to get into the theatre shows. Um, and then your 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 theatre shows, the tours, they can last anything from maybe six months um, to to even years at a time. So uh, if you are able to get onto one of these jobs, you know you're you're getting a regular paycheck each week, in fact. Um, for for a good chunk of time, but um, yeah, you need to be careful not to to spend all your money too soon because there might be a bit of a barren period after that uh, before another show starts up. So um, that was the second career path. So the next one is the third one, and I guess this is the one that really I found myself in, um, which is just to be a, a general freelancer. Um, so. You're basically doing a little bit of everything. Uh, I tend to think of myself as a as a jack of all trades. You know, I'm probably not not the greatest at any of them, but I can hopefully get by at, at most of them. Um, so it can be a pretty difficult one to survive in, um, but it, uh, for me, it can also be the most rewarding. You know, you're kept on your toes doing lots of different styles of music. Um, you know, each week you can have all kinds of different things going on. Um, obviously, there's no regular paychecks when you're doing that. It's just, you know, what, what you do is what you get. Uh, and when you do it, that's when you get, get paid sort of thing. Um, you spend a lot, a lot, an awful lot of time in the car on your own, racking up miles and miles as well, chasing the work around. I think there was a year when I probably can't have done far off about 50,000 miles in the car, um, chasing up and down. Um, but yeah, you know, you're, you're able to play, hopefully, most styles, uh, that's something you've got to work on, uh, even when you're at music college, getting used to playing lots of different styles and listening to lots of different styles, even even if it's not necessarily music that you particularly enjoy listening to, get listened to it anyway and just get that sort of musical language seeping into you as well. So, I mean, the, an example maybe of a week, one night you could be playing second trumpet in a chamber orchestra, the next night you could be um, you know, playing in a big band. The the day after that, you might be dressed in lederhosen doing an oompa function gig or something like that. And then you might be doing something totally different the next day, maybe in a recording studio or um, in on one of the one of the theatre shows, that kind of thing. So you're definitely kept on your toes as a, as a freelancer. Um, it's uh, yeah, scary at times, but like I say, it's definitely one of the most rewarding ways to, to earn a living. But you must be um, quite an organised person uh, to do that. Keep your diet, keeping well on top of your diary, because you know if you uh, if you start missing things, not turning up to things, being late, anything like that, you are found out pretty quickly. And there's loads and loads of other people. Um, just waiting to step into your shoes. Um, if you think of the all the music colleges in the in the UK, for example, how many students are getting turned out every year? That's all your competition. It's that many extra people every single year of getting added into the mix. So um, yes, you've got to keep your reputation good, and that is something that um, we mentioned in the the last career all about your reputation. Something to bear in mind is that, you know, good news travels, but bad news travels extremely fast. So, um, yeah, make sure you keep on top of it. And, uh, yeah, uh, another thing to, to bear in mind uh, is that in terms of reputation as well, um, you've got to be easy to be around socially as well. Um, it's not like, you know, as a freelancer, you're not contracted into any particular thing. So you don't have the safety net of of a contract to keep you in a job. So, you know, if you're ending up falling out with people all the time, if you're speaking out of turn, if you're being arrogant or anything like that, you're you're not really tolerated for very long and uh, then it gets pretty difficult to to get back into your circles again. Um, I mean, bearing, if, if I, you know, was having to book someone, um, they might not be the greatest player, but if I'm having to sit next to them for, you know, eight hours in a day, I need to at least know I can get on well with them. Um, so that, that carries quite a lot. Um, so yeah, other performance pathways then uh, on your instrument. We'll have a, a very quick chat about these three are the ones that I know probably most about just now. But um, other things to look into are playing in the bands on cruise ships. Uh, I know a few people that have done that and have had a really great time. Um, I believe the money's good. Obviously, you get to travel all over the place, around the world. Uh, I used to get very jealous of my friends that were doing the Caribbean cruises, coming back with the suntans and all that kind of stuff. But again, um, you're away for maybe six, eight months at a time. And um, 
you know, if you've got family or that kind of thing, then you're not seeing them for that amount of time. But also, if you're hoping to get back to doing freelancing, if you bring yourself out of the freelance circuit for that amount of time, like I said before, it can be very hard to get, get your foot back in the door. Um, so yeah, there's lots of things to, to weigh up, uh, whatever's going to work for you. Um, Another another career path would be looking into military uh, bands, military music. Um, I don't know a huge amount about this, but the RAF and the Army have certainly got bands that you can join. You're, I know that you're treated extremely well um, with the, the paychecks and pensions and all that kind of stuff that you don't get as a general freelancer. And even, even I think you get help with your uh, housing and all that kind of stuff too. Um, and it's also a great incentive to to keep healthy, to keep in shape as well. I have to say that there's quite a lot of um, professional musicians out there that aren't in the, the greatest physical shape, shall we say. So uh, being in the military is certainly a good incentive to, to keep on top of that. So there's lots and lots of playing avenues to, to check out, to look into. Um, make sure if you're, if you're unsure of any of them, try and yeah, find people that are involved in it and ask them questions. You know, the, one of the, one of the most important things to remember is that um, the people that you end up, especially music college, you kind of idolise a little bit. Um, they're just people, and they'll be more than happy to talk to you about what it is you do if you've got any questions or anything like that. So uh, definitely don't be shy to to ask. So um, the music industry is not obviously just uh, involved in performing itself. There's all kinds of other things to, to bear in mind as well. So I'm just going to have a very quick uh, chat about some of them before I finish up. So um, there's uh, maybe conducting careers. Some of you might be going to music college to, to study conducting. Obviously, we'll learn all about that uh, and how to get into the business that way um, through through the music college or the opposite of that in the theatres is um, is musical directing, MDing. Um, a lot of keyboard players tend to get into the MDing side of things as well, uh, especially in the theatre world. Uh, some of you might be studying composition as well. Um, it's a very hard um, career to to make a, a full-time living from, but uh, it can be done if you're, you're dedicated enough to do it. So um, yeah, that's something again to look into if that's something that interests you. Um, so again, I, I don't know a huge amount about these things, but if you can, when you're at music college, find out um, as much as you can from, from the, the staff and the faculty there, and hopefully that'll um, give you a bit of a boost in the right direction. Um, some of you may be more interested in the technology side of things. Uh, I have to hold my hands up and say I am totally useless with technology. In fact, making this video is about as technical as I can get, to be fair. But um, yeah, some of you might be interested in sound recording in the music studios or sound design for theatres or TV or film even, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, try and get contacts in that line of work to, and uh, get work work experience in sitting next to them and all that kind of stuff to, uh, to give you as much knowledge about it as possible. Um, Something else to bear in mind is the, the orchestras and bands and whatnot, they all need management teams behind them. Uh, they all need a, a strong knowledge of music. Uh, so the orchestras, that includes things like fixers, tour managers, librarians even as well. There's lots and lots of uh, these people that are in these jobs that, that may have studied instruments, in fact, uh, at music college and have decided that they didn't want to take that career path or maybe for one reason or other they couldn't take that career path on the, the performance side and have gone into the the um, the more sort of management side of things as well. Um, maybe working for um, different recording labels, that's a thing as well. You've got your A&R guys that go out to gigs listening for the next up and coming bands and all that kind of thing. So there's lots and lots out there in this music industry. Um, now, one last thing, uh, which probably most of you will end up doing a little bit of, uh, some of you might decide to do this full time, which is teaching. Um, and obviously for the development of the industry for the future, teaching's the most important thing really to teach uh, young people coming up and coming through um, all about the, the business and how to make it better. Um, so like I say, most musicians do this at some point. It might be private teaching, it might be uh, teaching for schools or, or music services when you're covering a slightly larger area um, and again the, the money for this can be can be good now not all of you will be natural at teaching with children um, or groups of 30 kids 
uh, all trying to blow trumpets at the same time. Um, but the more experience you get doing it, the, the better you tend to get at it, is what I've found. Um, and some of your courses at Music College might have uh, teaching endorsements uh, that you can add on to your degree as well. If that opportunity arises, I personally would recommend that you you take the chance just to build up as much experience as you can and uh, get, get into schools and whatnot and uh, get that CV boosted up as best as you can. Um, so I think that's pretty much all the things for the moment because I'm uh, starting to waffle on a little bit. One last thing uh, I will mention just before um, I finish up is that um, reputation, as I mentioned, is a very important thing in the music business uh, and it's very easy to tarnish your reputation. Um, and one of the ways a lot of people tend to fall into the into the trap is on social media. Uh, so just definitely take care when you're on social media with the things you put out. Don't be there on Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff so boasting about the, the work that you do. Uh, that doesn't tend to go down overly well with your fellow colleagues and that kind of thing. Just try and keep it keep it humble and uh, you'll be absolutely fine. So um, yeah, I, I guess when you're at music college, um, I've heard it once described, kind of treat it as a, as a pyramid or as a Toblerone. The bigger the base you have um, or the, the broader the 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 knowledge of music you have, then hopefully the the higher you can go and the more more uh, more money you can make in the business uh, going through your career. So I hope that's been relatively helpful for you um, and uh, at least sort of sparked some some other ideas that you might not have known of before. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it anyway with me rabbiting on at you and uh, hopefully I'll get to speak to you all again at some point soon. Take care then. Bye bye.